Hey what's up nerds, geeks and collectors alike, today we're taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series number 44 Jet Powered Optimus Prime and this guy is a real nice addition to the Studio Series line and here we have a window for the figure, a beautiful artwork number 44 Optimus Prime from Transformers Dark of the Moon manufactured by Takartomi and Hasbro. Here we have Transformers at the side and then at the side of the box here we have the uh, Autobot logo from the backdrop and then a beautiful artwork of Optimus Prime. At the back we have his obligatory product shots from robot mode to vehicle mode and as well as a shot of his annular ring. As well as advertising for Jetfire who he can combine with. And at the other side we have again studio series with the number 44 and the headshot of Optimus Prime. On top of the box we have the Transformer Stark of the Moon logo and then at the bottom we have the Lego Mambo Jumbo as well as the UPC. Then what are we waiting for? Let's get this guy opened up. And here we have Optimus Prime outside the box looking very awesome. And I love what they did for the playability of this figure by adding a lot of accessories. Yes, he is a Voyager scale but considered as a leader class due to the amount of accessories he comes with. This guy is a slight repaint and repackaging of the Studio Series number 32 with added accessories for the jet powered gimmick and then as well as the abdomen section because Studio Series number 32 was for the Transformers a live action movie in 2007 while well, this guy is for the Dark of the Moon which is like the only physical change that ever happened to Optimus while he was still rolling with this 1992 Peterbilt 379 truck mode and I really like this figure and the part of me really wants to give this a 100% passing grade but I have my nitpicks and as well as issues with the figure itself. And believe me, I have a very hard time complaining about figures, especially when it comes to Transformers and especially when it comes to Optimus Prime. But before we take a look at the figure, let's take a look at the diorama. And here is a awesome diorama and also unique. I doubt that there are other characters that will fit well with this diorama except for Optimus Prime due to the fact that he was the one who faced uh, Shockwave's Driller which is a nice touch. I really like the fact that they chose this picture. And right here we have Transformers Dark of the Moon and at the other side number 44 Studio Series. On the other side we have the see-through Autobot logo from the outside of the box and then Transformers. And here we have Optimus Prime alongside with his annular ring, fully equipped with his weapons. And let's take a close look at Optimus before we take a look at his armory. Here we have a beautiful sculpt of Optimus Prime's head sculpt. I like what they did with the eyes, giving him a navy baby blue eyes in contrast with the dark blue used as the base of the figure, giving it additional feel of life and that goes around the head e though i think personally i think that the head sculpt can use a little more silver and right here moving on to the chest what i notice is right here his uh, spark or i guess his spark chamber they should have painted this uh, gray or gunmetal gray or any color that the figure has like this gunmetal gray paint here I just wish that that area wasn't blue because that area really pops and you can really notice that 
paint could have been a little better, but it is what it is. I guess you can paint it if you have the materials and the time. And of course, the percussion if you really don't want to damage this figure. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And moving on to the arms, he has that flame effect. And this is actually the first uh, Voyager Optimus Prime in retail that ever incorporated the orange section to the arms. But unfortunately, I found this back piece a little uh, gappy, which is kind of a trend when it comes to Studio Series figures, especially when it comes to Voyager classes. Moving on to the legs, I wish actually that they still incorporated the one from the first release from the first Voyager Optimus Prime of the Studio Series, where you can collapse this thing down for a finer or cleaner look. For the feet, I still, I'm still baffled by the decision to remove it. It was just a strange choice since it really gave the figure a cleaner look in terms of robot mode. And then there we are again with the flame effect and the orange bits. I really like that additional paint. It took them three Optimus Prime figures before they got that right. In terms of painting and sculpting, I guess the sculpting is as good as it can get especially that this figure transforms but I guess for the painting I thought that it could be a lot better especially in this area and then some and I prefer actually the windshields if they were black much like in the movie and here I really think that they should incorporate that transformation step from the previous version, from the first version of the Studio Series Optimus Prime, the Revenge of the Fallen one. And moving on to the annular ring, let's take a look at the jetpack first. And as you can, before we actually start, as you can notice that the weapons or the artillery Optimus has is doubled here. That's because a buddy of mine was letting go of his figures. And then I noticed that he had an additional Studio Series Optimus Prime 44, uh, Studio Series 44 Optimus Prime. And then he sold it to me for 15 bucks, which is really worth it, especially considering that this looks awesome if it's filled to the brim. And then here we have the jetpack which is a really nice piece to have especially when you're actually it's the main piece when it comes to jet powered optimus prime aside from optimus prime himself uh, this thing is painted nicely i guess but the sculpting is actually bothersome for me since it lacks details uh, such as from this part like in the front part of the backpack it's actually hollow it doesn't have any sculpting the only sculpting is right here and unfortunately it's covered uh it's in optimus prime's back so you don't actually see it even in his alt mode it's inside the trailer so that sculpting it's really, I wouldn't say unnecessary, but it won't be featured much since you're going to be displaying him with either his annular ring or on his back. And in order to attach the jetpack, first you gotta do some simple transformation steps for the back here. And then putting this on this uh, actually slides in these two pieces it slides in at his back here uh, let's take a closer look here it is this slides right here there's a little groove there where it slides perfectly and fits perfectly and here on the other side and at this peg holes there are actually pegs on the jetpack right here and here right here which you gotta be wary if you don't wanna chip the paint but i think this this back piece is a made of blue plastic so you wouldn't have to worry about paint chipping anytime soon and here's the peg peg number one and then peg number two there it goes in and there you have him optimus prime 
with his jetpack but he's not jet powered Optimus Prime yet first uh, that's only the first step the next step what we gotta do is pose him and of course equip him with his weapons right here and take these off and then let's take a closer look first it's made of gray plastic though I wish it was painted and uh, but I don't mind when it comes to paint especially for accessories but I wish that they weren't hollow but then again I guess you wouldn't be looking at this figure from the bottom part but it would have been nice it would have felt uh, more worth it especially that you're paying for a leader class figure but that doesn't mean he's bad he's actually a pretty good figure to be honest i'm coming for you And here we have his Ion Blaster and actually Studio Series number 32 Voyager Class Optimus Prime from the 07 movie came with this. That's why if you're getting uh, any of these two figures I recommend getting this since not only are you getting the jet powered Optimus Prime you'll already be getting that uh, Studio Series number 32 figure along with this with some additional accessories. The only thing you're missing out is the black paint at the barrel of the gun. And I really enjoy seeing this figure dual wield his iron cannon same like when he did in Revenge of the Fallen. And here we have his battle axe. And as I remember, even from my previous review, the, the last night, Caliber Optimus Prime, it was supposed to have uh, this glowing effect. Unfortunately, it's just made of this gray plastic with no painting whatsoever. But the sculpting is fairly good. I guess I can give it that much. And then removing the ion blasters, let's replace them with the yeast axe. And then it's actually a tight fit on this arm let's try to put on the other arm if we can stand him up hopefully it doesn't fall over and no the jetpack isn't that heavy it's just my uh, posing of him or it's just off balance from the way I pose him and taking off this other gun this oh, this is actually I wouldn't say loose but this this is how it should be you know there's there's supposed to be a little parts or a little piece of the handle sticking out of this arm uh, unlike the right one where it's just at the tip because that's not how you hold an axe but then again this looks awesome I guess you can paint it if you have some time and if you have the materials and as well as the bravery to update this figure because there's a chance that you may ruin it there's a chance that I may ruin it that's why I personally do not customize my figures that is until I properly learn how to apply paint and whatnot and this is actually the main reason why I choose I chose to purchase the other weapons the duplicate weapons if you will from my buddy because I wanted this version of Optimus Prime to at least dual wield his sword actually both his iconic ion blaster and this is blades these are actually the accessories I wish that originally came with but unfortunately it did not which I personally think is another missed opportunity on Hasbro's part because Optimus Prime oh okay there he goes again there are always figures falling off my reviews that I think I should make this into a trend but going back I think that Optimus Prime uh, is known for dual wielding his energy blades as well as his ion blasters considering that 
some of its accessories are quite lackluster. If, they're, if they are not hollow, they are missing some paint or overall practicality like this shield. As good as a painting is, it lacks paint and it lacks practicality. That is not how you hold a shield, not like this and especially not like this that's not how you dual wield a shield not that you should dual wield a shield to begin with i just think that looks like captain america or excuse me a nomad's um, wakandan shield unless it's trying to fight alongside with the avengers in wakanda that is not how you hold the shield and let's take that ridiculous thing off and uh, uh, it's actually a tight fit it's actually a tight fit for every accessory especially at the left and i find it no i wouldn't find it weird i guess it's just a tight fit you, know, you do what you do but what i thought is this is how you hold the shield or at least uh something like this and what i noticed was they had this peg thing actually you can peg the gun there in alt mode in truck mode i just thought that instead of putting a peg on the shield they could have put, uh, integrated a slot and then you can have the shield like that even though it's at the back of his hand i guess it would make more sense rather than this so let's take it off right here that's what i considered actually this is why i considered the shield accessory as the bottom of the barrel for articulation, Optimus Prime's head is on a ball joint so he can do a 360. He can look up that far and look down that far. Moving on to the arms, his shoulder pad can move and then his arm can go out that far and do an entire 360 as well as a bicep swivel and a 90 degree bend as well as wrist rotation and articulation. And that's the same for the other arm. He has a a waist swivel but it's hindered by the kibble on his back especially if that kibble is secure and clipped in what you can do is open that up just a little bit and put it back giving you more range of motion but it's still hindered by the kibble um, you can only it only improves a little so i just clip that back in and there we have our generic waist swivel which is also hindered by the wheels which hits the back part of the grills of the truck and here we have a thigh swivel which is being hindered by the other wheel so what you do is put this back since it's on the other part of the thigh it's at the lower part it's below the knee giving you more range of movement it doesn't hit and then it hits foot can go out that far and go back that far and let's see if we can do the splits he can do the splits pretty fairly and not a perfect split but still a great split and here we have a 90 degree bend at the knee right right here as well as movement on the knee guard and here we have a toe bend but i wouldn't consider that as a toe bend since it's more like the entire feet as well it's for the transformation it's intended to be for the transformation and a slight pivot and that is optimus prime's articulation with his points of articulation i guess you can play with him and as well as display and pose him in a good scale And for some size comparisons, I'm gonna compare him with my fellow Dark of the Moon Studio Series figures. 
and then first and foremost here we have his arch enemy Megatron Dark of the Moon Studio Series Leader Class Megatron and let me fix his cow here and they actually look good together but I think from the Dark of the Moon I think they're about the almost the same size I don't remember Optimus being this small to Megatron in Dark of the Moon since they're both trucks and especially at the final battle I don't think uh, Megatron was that big compared to Optimus and here we have uh, Studio Series Leader Class Shockwave since he shared quite a fair amount of screen time with Optimus Prime and considering that he died to Optimus Prime and here we have fellow Autobot Dark of the Moon Studio Series Dark of the Moon Sideswipe this is actually a pretty good scale I really like the fact that Sideswipe only comes up to Optimus Prime's waist considering that he is only a sports, uh, sports car while Optimus Prime is a truck and here we have Studio Series Transformers Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class sound wave and from the scaling of each other I think they really look good I guess my only nitpick is that Megatron is a little too big compared to these guys but that's just my nitpick when this is Optimus Prime's review so let's get to transformation yeah.
here we have Optimus Prime in his 1992 Peterbilt uh, 379 truck mode and this mode is really awesome especially with the trailer and unfortunately my copy refuses to peg in as well as my camera refuses to cooperate but it's tolerable for me especially that I'm gonna have this figure posed in robot mode considering I have his additional accessories even without it I'd still pose him with the jet powered gimmick uh, let's take a closer look at the truck itself it is a nice rendition of the 1992 Peterbilt 379 which is a really awesome truck especially for Optimus Prime where I actually saw him first for the first time and I really like what they did here and this is actually like I said weirdly enough this it took three figures in order to get that orange effect in and as you can see it really refuses to peg it in but if you really peg it in if you're able to peg it in it elevates at the grills here which leaves another gap which I would prefer it to have uh, the gap on in between the grills since it's less noticeable and the gap is actually really small if you're looking at it from afar or at a certain angle you wouldn't notice that there's a gap in between the grills which you at first I guess it's uh, infuriating and it's kind of annoying but uh, as time passes by you just you know, get used to it <laughs> I know I did at first it really stressed me out but now it just it doesn't matter for me since I got this figure in Hong Kong actually in an airport in Hong Kong we were coming back from our three-day trip and I actually gotten used to it and looking at the trailer here we have a Autobot symbol as well as that uh, dark blue once more I personally think the trailer could use a little more paint I'm aware that the movie version of the trailer wasn't that detailed either in terms of paint but then again it could use some silver painting or could have been made in silver plastic and unfortunately you cannot fit another figure inside Optimus Prime's trailer which is kind of a bummer but I guess kind of forgivable since it transforms and holds the weapons inside I think I can let that slide for now and looking at the bottom here we can see the weapons or at least uh, some of the weapons as well as the jetpack transformed and holed up inside the trailer neatly now let's hitch the trailer back to optimus prime and as you can see here he actually rolls pretty well and speaking of rolling let's take a look at the trailer again before i forget once more uh, as you can see here, the back part of the wheels are the ones that actually rotate while the inner part of the wheels, or I mean the inner wheel, is actually sculpted in, which is kind of a bummer since they're just wheels. How much does it take for Hasbro to put additional wheels here? As you can see here, it actually moves. You can actually see the mechanism or the simple machine that it moves while the other one is just sculpted in which is a kind of a very weird thing to do for Hasbro and for size comparisons here we have Studio Series Dark of the Moon Leader Class Megatron weirdly enough this is uh, for me in scale due to the fact that this trailer is uh, pretty big if you really think about it and it's not an actual part of Optimus Prime more like an accessory for him while well, Megatron is an entire this entire truck mode is his entire body well here we have uh, dark of the moon studio series leader class shockwave and it actually looks like i guess it's a good scale since we never really saw shockwave's alt mode in dark of the moon it's kind of hard to to scale him with other figures because you really don't know what he really looks like in his alt mode and actually that's Megatron's alt mode but I guess you can think that not only Megatron can be a tank in Cybertron and here we have uh, Studio Series Deluxe Class Soundwave 
which is kind of big uh, for a Mercedes Benz compared to a Peterbilt truck. It's kind of it's kind of big for a in, in terms of scaling for the alt mode. It's, it's kind of big, and if you really think about it. If you can really fit a figure, he wouldn't fit in there just because he's too wide or at least his uh, side mirrors uh, will hit the edges. Well, here we have a Deluxe Class Studio Series Dark of the Moon Sideswipe, which is a actually a good scale. Let's bring back uh, Soundwave for a minute. Here he is. Yeah, he's, he is kind of big for... Oh well, it, well, I guess it is what it is. So there you have it, Transformers Studio Series number 44, Jetwing Optimus Prime, or Jet Powered Optimus Prime. And if you like this video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. Till next time.